Good evening, everyone, and welcome to our February 16th, 20th, sorry, 15th, 2023 board meeting. Madam Secretary, my name is Mr. Roll Call. Director Alexander, Director Diane um, Glover Brown, Director Leonard, Director Liggins, Director Orr, Director Thompson, Director Wilkes, Vice President Kennedy, and President Breland. Followed by the pledge of the flag. And prior to our moment of silent reflection, I would like to thank and commend Mr. Harry Harmon, who passed yesterday, for his years of dedicated service to this district. And just to let him know, let him and his family know that he's in our thoughts and prayers at this time. Okay. Off with our Celebrating Families report, I would like to read a statement to you. This year, Jackson will be celebrate, celebrating the Willard Goodermuth family. Phoenix is a fourth grader at Jackson, and Jaden is a first grader. When I asked the Jackson staff for their input on which family should receive this honor, Ms. Brait, Mrs. Bowman, and Mrs. Jameson responded almost immediately with their vote and provided reasons to support their positions. I'd like to read their thoughts regarding the Willard Good Goodermuth family. From Ms. Brait and Ms. Bowman, Phys Phoenix is a pleasure to have in class. He is always showing all aspects of pride, both inside and outside the classroom. Phoenix was the student of the month and he helped give back to the staff by running our sunshine cart. In math and ELA, he continuously scores proficient and advanced on common and interim assessments. He puts forth great effort in both ELA and math, which results in his ability to excel and is directly connected to his family's continued support. He supports his friends in the classroom and is always willing to lend a helping hand. Phoenix's mother is always willing to volunteer for any events and supports Jackson as needed. Phoenix is a respectful young man and always strives for excellence in everything he does. From Ms. Jameson, I have had the pleasure of teaching both Jaden and Phoenix over the years. Both boys are a joy to have in class. They work hard, are kind and helpful to others, and are always striving to be better. Their mother is very involved in the boys' education and is always responsive when communicating about academics or attendance. You can really tell that she truly wants her children to succeed. I cannot think of a more deserving family to receive this honor. Jennifer, the Jackson community would like to thank you for raising your sons to be exemplar community members. We appreciate you entrusting us with their education and allowing us to be part of their journey. Phoenix and Jaden, the Jackson community would like to thank you for being positive role models and living Bearcat pride every day. Well, the 
Okay. <laughs> Excuse me, before the family mm -hmm. departs, if they're going to depart, again, we echo the sentiment of Ms. Fogel. Thank you very much for entrusting us and educating your children. And we're pleased to have these exemplary gentlemen be Bearcats. And hopefully their journey will continue to be a success. And we will have to get over there to check these young men out and see them in their element. Thank you again. Thank you. <laughs> I wouldn't be up here either if I didn't have to. So it's all good. Um, good evening. Good evening. I am Mrs. Bowman, Principal at Jackson. Oh, I'm Dr. Sorry, Jones Bowman. is I here. Didn't, I didn't threw your name out and had it all twisted. Oh, that's okay. You can just call me number one. All right, number one. I work still. She has a bunch of sisters. Before we begin, though, I would like to say a few words. Um, I would like to take this moment to thank the school board and central administration for providing us this opportunity to elevate and honor Jackson's efforts and achievements. I would like to acknowledge our parent liaisons who are here, Mrs. Irma Rodriguez and Ms. Marie Rodriguez. We are very proud of the work that they do to encourage family and community. <laughs> We are very proud of the work that they do to encourage family and community engagement. I would also like to thank the Jackson staff for their daily dedication and perseverance. Without the staff members in attendance this evening, as well as those who could not be with us in person, Jackson would not be what we are today, nor would we reach our goals for tomorrow. At Jackson, it's always a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Thank you. Ms. Bowman. Just for your your parent, your parent representatives, we have two board members that sit on this board who also filled those shoes in the past, Ms. Diane Glover Brown and Ms. Lisa Kennedy. So your work is very much respected and appreciated in this district. Thank you. Okay, ready? You're on a trip now. We're gonna take you on a journey. Welcome to Jackson Pre-K to 8. This is our school presentation, February 15th, 2023. Our purpose statement, at Jackson K-8, our goal is to develop members of a community who think critically and challenge an ever-changing world. In order to achieve this goal, we will create a culture focused on equity and high expectations for all, display behaviors consistent with our beliefs in shared responsibility and emotional safety, meet the needs of our students through a growth mindset and empower students to achieve their personal best. We will also engage and partner with all members of our community. At Jackson, we also have three core values that we stand by and they are family, making a difference and accountability. Just so um, your, I share with you that those core values and that purpose statement was developed by the whole Jackson family together. That was a culminating activity from everyone. And then the school mission statement, district's mission statement. Current enrollment at Jackson, you have in front of you pre-K 20, kindergarten 51, first grade 52, second grade 50, third 55, fourth 66, fifth 48, sixth 59, seventh 48, and eighth 48 for a total of 493 students. Our demographic breakdowns for ethnicity are 172 students uh, are black or 34.9%, 270 students or 54.8% are Hispanic, 23 students or 4.7% are white, and we have 20, 27 students or 5.5 that are multiracial. Our identified subgroups within the building, we have 60 students or 12.2% identified as IEP students. 
We have 219 students, our 44.4% of our population identified as EL students. We also have 23 students or 4.7% of our population dual identified both IEP and EL. And the economically disadvantaged students in our building are 440 students or 84.5%. Under family and student supports, our student attendance is currently 88.41%. We have chronic absenteeism at 48%. Chronic absenteeism is defined by the state as students who have missed more than 10% of school. So at the time of this presentation, we have 237 students who have missed more than 11 days of school. Our suspension totals, we have suspended 49 students total for 109 incidents. We have had 330 incidents in the building so far, and those are made up by 93 students. And just as a point of reference, three of the students in those 93 have had 73 referrals or 22% of the incidents. So three students account for one fifth of the incidents at Jackson. We have three students who have been expelled so far this school year. Knock on wood, hopefully no more. We have um, a lot of things that we do under family and community outreach. We had our back to school night open house, parent-teacher conferences. We had a community member in our building, a young man, his house burned down while he was in school. Um, and so we did a fundraiser for him and Dr. Jones will speak a little bit more uh, to that fundraiser. We do home visits. We have a monthly newsletter that goes out in three languages to support the three languages that are spoken in our building. We make thousands of parent contacts. This Christmas, we had a staff member make it her mission to make sure that every student in the building received a Christmas gift, and we did that. She did that. She made that happen. Every student received a Christmas gift to take home. We also do monthly student of the month breakfast. They're hot breakfast. We work with our cafeteria. Um, sometimes you might see us putting aprons on and flipping pancakes ourselves. You never know. Um, but the parents love it. We invite family members and they come in. It's a great time. And then we also participate in release time, which is a, an activity through one of the local churches where they pick up the students. We have two leadership teams in the building. We have an instructional leadership team and a cultural leadership team. The instructional leadership team members are um, in front of you. Lindsay Coltrider is our MTSS specialist. Jared Miller is a fifth and sixth grade math teacher. Abigail Brait, a third and fourth grade math teacher. Frank Leno represents the special education section. Beth McCorkle is our seventh and eighth grade ELA teacher. Casey Jamison and Jasmine Garcia are both first slash second grade teachers, meaning that they loop with their students every year. These are our PVOS scores. Math and English language arts PVAS are growth scores, meaning it's a comparison from the previous year. Science is a proficiency score. While we do have and have been doing a good job in math to hold our own, we do have some areas in ELA where we can strengthen what it is we are doing. Our school improvement plan and our 90 day plan from UVA mirrors those needs. Um, our very first big rock in our SIP plan is small group instruction in both ELA and math. And so we've had numerous professional developments this year and we are working towards improving those growth scores. These are the winter CDT scores. Again, we are working with the MTSS and instructional coaches to help in areas where we need some assistance. But you can see we have a percentage of students working towards grade level and a percentage of students that are on track to proficiency. Again, this is part of our SIP goal and our 90 day plan. So we are again currently working on improving our small group instruction where we meet the needs of the students in order to fill the gaps that they are currently experiencing. IXL is a program that the district uses. Um, according to the IXL program itself, that research shows that if you answer at least 30 questions per week, it has a measurable impact on student outcomes. If you look at the chart in front of you, our students 
save two weeks, with the exception of two weeks, have answered more than double the number of questions expected. And on some weeks, more than triple the number of questions expected to be answered. So we are anticipating um, an increase in their proficiency levels and their growth. This is another example of what's going on in IXL. If you look at the first two sections of the pyramid, that is 50%. It may not exactly look like it, but if you calculate it, it is 50%. So 50% of the things that's the skills that students have practiced, they are proficient or have mastered. Our students in the building have answered almost 1.4 million questions this school year on IXL, both at home and in school. And this is just another example of our IXL growth in math and in language arts. The trajectory is exactly the way we would like it to be. Common interim assessment data for ELA are our breakdowns. ELA common assessments are only taken in third through eighth grade. We have a number of students who are trending proficient and advanced, and those individuals that are in the basic category, we are very much hoping to have them jump to the next proficiency level. Same with math. You will see that we do not have any students proficient in seventh and eighth grade math, and we are working on that. We have our seventh and eighth grade math teacher working with um, the instructional coaches through the E3. And we have had him observe one teacher, another teacher in the district, and he is scheduled to observe a second teacher tomorrow. So we are working to provide him with some skills and some assistance in classroom. On the instructional side, we have completed 89 walkthroughs, two formal observations have been are currently in open stages and nine have been completed for about one third of the requirement for this year. As far as our talent management is concerned, those curriculum um, there's common interim assessments that we talked about, the scores that I showed you. This is the teacher assessment participation rate, meaning the number of students in each grade level that have taken the test. As you can see, in all of our grade levels, with the exception of seventh and eighth grade math, we have reached the 100%. We have every single one of our students taking the test. That provides us valuable information and gives us a plan as to where we need to meet those students and what we need to do to help them continue to improve. The other thing on the left-hand side, you can see a teacher attendance is at 90.6%. And a piece of information that I thought was important for you to hear or to see, we have three brand new teachers who have less than one year's worth of experience. We have seven teachers who have less than three years worth of experience for a total of 10 teachers in our building. What that amounts to is 26% of our teachers are non-tenured and have less than three years experience. We are most definitely a work in progress. And this, Reference talent management references the school-based professional developments that we've had so far, specifically the small group instruction. We've had three sessions so far. We've had a session on youth mental health. Teacher resilience is a book study that we're doing on our early dismissal Wednesdays that are building directed. We've had a presentation on stress management specifically for staff. I had a mentor who once told me if you don't feed the teachers they will eat the children that's what stress management for the teachers was meant to do have them not eat the children data driven instruction is delivered by our instructional leadership team we have also had data collection and behavioral observation sessions with our school psychologists and our mtss specialists and then we have the districts, diversity, equity, inclusion, and belonging, which has happened in the building, and then individualized coaching when needed with our MTSS specialists and the E3 plus um, instructional coaches. The restorative practices, we just at the end of January sent four staff members to a restorative justice, restorative practices. 
workshop. And so the idea is that they will be presenting something to the whole building at a later date. And while I know you love to hear me speak, I think I'm gonna let Dr. Jones continue with the presentation. Thank you. Yeah. Good evening, everybody. Good evening. I had to pull it up a little bit. I couldn't reach it. <laughs> so um, as mentioned, um, Ms. Bowman had mentioned, we have two, two leadership teams that we, um, that we use to operate using the UVA model that we use to operate and make our executive decisions at Jackson. The second one that we operate with is our cultural leadership team. And as you see presented on the board, we have um, two structures that we operate with those so that we incorporate all of our stakeholders um, during our cultural leadership team. Um, composed of that team is we have our social worker, Ms. Nelson, our MTSS coach, Ms. Cartwrighter, our school psychologist, um, Dr. Mortensen, um, our CIS representative, um, Ms. Collier, as well as our school-based school, co school -based counselor, Ms. Koss Kessler. From our, that's our support staff um, that they operate on our school-based team. So for our teachers, our teacher representatives, we have Mr. McFall, who represents our seventh and eighth grade team. We have uh, Ms. Uh, Kraut, who represents our third and fourth grade team. Ms. Bruckhart represents our kindergartners and first grade team, as well as Dr. Shaw, first grade, and Ms. Um, Henny is our paraprofessional representative. Along with that, we have coupled our community, um, our community representatives. We have, we're blessed this year to have three, not two, but three. Um, apparently he's on representatives and they have a very good pulse and a very good ear on our Jackson community, not only Jackson, but York, York City as a whole. So they always bring to us any problems or issues that we need to address. And I would say a good a good majority of the decisions that we're making on how to reach parents and how to outreach things come come directly from them, as well as the meetings that they've been having with uh, Ms. Torres Ocasio. Um, and then we also have some very good um, uh, community partners. We are partnered with, um, and it's just, this is a very short list. We are partnered with um, Rest Haven Nursing Home. We um, were able to have our students be pen pals with some of the senior citizens that are there. So they reach out to them and they're able to um, to do some cards and different different things for that. Um, the York Area Federal Credit Union, um, we have we have them as a representative for, um, for fiscal responsibility. Um, they, they've been able to, to provide us some information so we can help provide it to our students as well as uh, financial responsibility, fiscal responsibility. Bethesda Mission Ministries, we go to them whenever we need snacks and stuff for our for our, our activities so we can uh, feed our children and do things on a on a uh, low cost basis. Church with the Open Door is able to provide us with uh, snacks and anything that we need or anything. Big Apple Bagels as well. We have a bunch more um, community partners as well. So um, this particular year, 2022 uh, to 2023, we wanted to focus on three big rocks using the UVA model once again. And these rocks didn't come just out of my pocket or out of Ms. Bowen's pocket. We started off with, a, with an introductory service, uh, survey to our students and to our staff. And we compiled the, 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 the results and came up with these three focuses to improve our school climate and culture. The first is we need to increase stakeholder communication. And I'm gonna tell you a little bit of, of some of the things we've done throughout the year so far and are still doing to make sure that we, uh, that we attack that rock. Uh, the second um, rock that we, that we um, needed to address was increasing student, staff, and family uh, vote voice, more importantly on the, on the student voice. Um, and as well as the third one was to increase our reward opportunities. So once again, these, these uh, rocks came from suggestions, complaints, if you want to call it, <laughs> uh, feedback from our students and from our staff and community members of things that we need to address in order to improve our, stu our school climber and culture. So the first rock that we, that we wanted to address was, in was increasing our student, um, increasing our stakeholder uh, communication. And we do that by, on, on a monthly basis, we send out our PBIS newsletter, um, which is um, sent out from our school, uh, school social worker, and it's sent out through our students as well as just, uh, staff and to families. We also have a weekly um, Jackson FYI that is sent out to all of our staff. And that's basically like high level points and of course some motivational things that we send to the staff every Monday just to get the week going. Um, one big thing that I kind of kind of like to do to kind of break the ice is I'll often do data dad jokes corny dad jokes so we send it out in the fy so whenever you need to to reference that um you do that we also have our jackson uplift so it gives the opportunity for our staff to uplift their colleagues so whenever you see somebody struggling you can say something positive and give affirmation so you can fill their cup as well we also um, are communicating all of our information through our PLCs um, as well as our PDs. Um, we, we we meet on a weekly basis in our in our um, leadership teams as well as the um, as well as we when we do our PLCs. Those those happen on um, two two times a week as well. So we, that's how we disseminate a lot of our information. We have representatives for each and every grade level span, and they take that information to the colleagues and go from there. As well as the other way, they bring back any feedback or anything that we need. Um, the second rock was increasing student, staff, and family voice. 
we, we are attacking that by having our, we, we continuously send out our open surveys along with the surveys that are, um, that, that need to be sent out for our fidelity checks. Um, given our, given those things, we send out additional surveys that are just specific to Jackson so that we can find the pulse of where our students, where our staff members are. This allows us to, before we make a decision, before we plan events, before we move forward things, we're making sure that everybody is on board and everybody is conducive to that. We try to make as many people happy as possible. We send out an anonymous surveys. Um, so a lot of some sometimes staff don't want the staff students don't want to um, send back surveys in fear of the, the 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 reflection or something that comes back. So we send it out most of the time anonymously, so that they can um, with autonomy they can share their thoughts without any retribution coming back. We once again we have our parent liaisons, like I said, who was a great pulse of of our parents and of the of the city. We have our PLC reports, with like I said, come back from our representatives, and we have our student ambassadors. Our student ambassadors um, are are a selection. We had a whole selection process conducted by our school psychologist and our CIS worker, as well as all of our support staff. But these are these are basically the. Um, students throughout the school that are representatives of Jackson. So they have to have high, high, um, high grades, high academics, um, no behavior issues, as well as a desire to want to represent the school in, in, in all aspects. So we usually lean on them and go to them whenever we need the student um, student voice or need an immediate student voice. But more importantly, we allow them to start planning a lot of our different activities that we have. And last but not least, our last rock for increasing our, our reward opportunities um, we have uh, four fests, or what do we call seasonal fest. We have we completed our fall fest, our winter fest. Spring is coming up, and summer is coming up. And what those are is opportunity for students to buy in using our live school system, which I'll get to in a little bit. But the district has a live school system, which we use to, re to reward students for their positive behavior. They're able to use those points either in our school store or they can save them up to, um, to go to our, uh, to our fest. And our fest in the fall, for example, was carnival style. Um, so we had cotton candy and popcorn for students to buy. Um, of course, all free, of, all free, but they need to use their live school points. And then they also had a bunch of indoor activities. So they had like a ring toss, a bottle toss, and different things. We have a bunch of pictures to share with you if you, if you so choose to see what that looks like. Um, Winterfest was a little bit of the same. Um, we had a lot of activities. It was a lot, lot smaller, given the feedback from our staff and from our students. A lot of the grade levels wanted to do things on their own. They didn't want to be paired with, with, with bigger grade, grade levels. We grouped like um, K to four together, so they wanted to piece it together, do K to two. So we, we uh, listened to that feedback, restructured our, our Winterfest, and we were able to do a lot more fun activities in the classroom and in smaller spaces throughout Jackson to cater to their needs. We also had um, Santa come and visit us. Um, we were able to book him solely for us for the day. So he was able to go to visit our K to three classes and they were able to take pictures with Santa. So the students loved it. They loved um, sitting on his lap and saying what they wanted for Christmas. But more importantly, they were able to have cookies and have that experience with them. Um, we have our Paul Mart. Paul Mart is our school store um, where students can use their live school points, like I was mentioning, um, so that they can um, buy rewards for their behavior. So we went through actually three re um, reiterations of our Paul Mart system. <laughs> and that, once again, is just a testament to how we were listening to our student staff and family voice. So originally we had it uh, housed in our, in our JJJ, which is our support staff, our school psychologists and social workers and everybody. Uh, but um, staff and students weren't okay with the frequency of what was going on there. So we restructured again, and we um, were able to go to a cart system where we actually hand delivered the carts to the classrooms to increase their frequency. They, they wanted to take uh, staff talked about it and said they wanted to take items into their own hand, which we appreciate it. So now Paul Mart is being taken place on each grade level. So we have staff representatives that are volunteering their time to run our Paul Mart and are managing the systems and are managing the things, which is a, a huge increase because it is an increased accountability for the staff point, uh, staff perspective, because they're the ones that are giving out the points anyway. And also it is a huge load off of our support staff that are able to do, do other things. So instead of spending a whole Wednesday or spending a whole Thursday of doing Paul Mart, they're able to, to do other things and, and go from there. Um, we have our student of the months, which um, Ms. Bowman had mentioned was is every uh, once a month. We usually try to do the first the first um, Friday of the of the month is open invitation for you all. Um, we usually have pancakes there. We have all types of fixings, eggs, bacon with um, the with the students calls um, glizzes. 
which is basically corn corn dogs, sausages wrapped in corn dogs. So we, <laughs> so that's what they call them. So we call them gl- glizzes. Add the add the twang to it. Um, so <laughs> they love it. And they enjoy. It. They dip it in the syrup, and it's you know, I mean, they they go to heaven instantly. So, but um, we have a, a plethora of that as well as juices. Um, we invite all of our family community representatives to be there. Our parent liaisons are often there serving and um, being a huge part of our community. We have our marking period awards as well as our ABC awards. ABC stands for attendance, behavior, and character development. So on a monthly basis, uh, on a, excuse me, bi-monthly basis through the marking period, staff um, staff recommend students that are basically those um, those progress awards, those students who might not be the top of the tier academically, but are showing leaps and bounds improving on their behavior and their and their their school conduct. So they they get a bunch of awards. We had one um, two weeks ago. And we, we, what we do is we call all this, all of our students down in groups down to our uh, multi-purpose room, our gym cafeteria asium. Um, and we uh, allow them to celebrate their peers and most importantly, the staff to, to celebrate their students, which they nominated. So um, I want to get to an introduction of, of what we had started um, this year. Um, and it's basically, um, it was basically a feed off of Ms. Bowman and I's competitiveness. Um, we were trying to find how can we, how can we positively use compet- a competitive nature to do what we need to do to improve our school. And what, what, what we came up with in our, in our cultural leadership team is our houses. So if you mind going to the next slide. Oh, I, it was before that. I'll get to, I promise I'll get to the houses. Let me go into live school real quick. I thought that slide was up there. Um, so our cultural leadership team, um, like we wanted to start off with the progress of, of our thing. So um, live school, as we know, is, is, is a district initiative. The district is paying um, a, good, a good amount of money for it, but the program is awesome because it allows, it allows staff to, um, to, to directly assign points for, for a scripted behavior, and we use our pride model, which the entire district use. Um, and they're, the students are able to log in their individual accounts and parents as well and see, okay, wh- what, what did Johnny do well today? Why did he get, what did he get points for direct today? But on the back end of it, we're able to analytically see what are the key um, behaviors that are, are being rewarded? And what are the key times of the day that are being rewarded? What staff are given the most points? So we honestly, we, we um, often honor the staff that are giving out the most points on a monthly basis, basis giving them kudos and giving them shout outs. But um, in the beginning, it was kind of, um, it was a modeling aspect for us. We had to model how to use live school and how to give things out. So of course, the best way we know how to model is by, by doing it. I'm not going to hold somebody to a standard that we don't do as well. So we not only have a student live school um, page or, or a website, we also have a, st- a staff one as well, where Ms. Bowman and I um, are, where Ms. Bowman and I are the teachers and our staff are our students. So whenever we see staff doing something great or they they are going beyond the measure, which all of our staff today, you guys get 200 live school points for showing up. <laughs> for showing up and taking time out of their day. Um, so we, we reward them for their positive behavior as we expect them to reward our students for their positive behavior. So once again, we're modeling the expected, the, the expected behavior. We set an expectation. We know the district expectation or fidelity expectation is to give out one point a month. We said we're Jackson. We're, we're great. We can do better than that. So our expectation is to give out to every student that is showing good behavior. They should be receiving at least 10 points a day. So our student, and as you see on the graphic there in the beginning of August, we had about 76% staff participation. And that comes with, as, as we said, we have a lot of staff that are untenured or new. They don't, they're not necessarily understanding what live school is. So that was a tribute to that. That was a, a teachable moment for us to teach them how to use live school. And our student participation was at 94%. But as of this report, we can say that we are at even more than 96, we're at 99.4% of our staff utilizing not live school. We even extended it to our, our support staff, our custodial staff, even our cafeteria staff and, and our nurses um, to, to use live school in every way as a way to, to directly reflect our students in good behavior. So back to the houses, as we were saying. So, um, so each market pair, we have a bunch of challenges as a, as a friendly competition for us to support our staff and more importantly, to uplift our school climate and culture. So for the first market pair, we said, okay, what are the things looking at in our, in our cultural leadership team and our, and our instructional leadership team? What are some things that we need to attack? And Ms. Bowman went through those in the beginning. So we said, all right, we obviously need to attack attendance. We need to attack IXL progress as well as behavior in key areas. And those key areas would be the lunch 
lunchroom. You know, students are in the summer. They had a whole summer. They need to be reminded on how to behave in the cafeteria, how to behave in our encores, because um, we got our encores back this year. So when you're in the separate encores, how do we behave in those areas? So, so we made that a challenge for us. First thing we did was we took our entire school body based off of our homerooms and our support staff, as you see there, and we broke them up into the four elements, you know, I mean, earth, earth, wind and fire. <laughs> for those that are there, we broke them into the four essential elements of earth, air, fire and water, water. And our cultural leadership team broke them up so there was no bias on my part, but they took the initiative to break it up and to make it as fair as possible, also based off of the school, the, the, the number and everything. And then we, we broke up our support staff, those that don't have homerooms and those that don't have um, students directly, um, but see them in a support way, they also can support the houses. And for every activity that we had, um, so we did weekly challenges for attendance, any homeroom as they were competing for the grade levels that got the best attendance, best attendance percentage, they received points for the house. And at the end of the marking period, um, at the end of the marking period, we tallied all those points and we were able to reward the, that entire that entire um, team with the prize. So the first marking period, we're glad to say that Team Earth won the challenge. <laughs> we have a couple of representatives of Team Earth here. So they were able to uh, win the challenge and all the students in Team Earth received uh, snow cones and popcorn, was it right? Yeah, snow cones and popcorn. So we were we were there popping out popping out popcorn and making snow cones for all the students as they were exiting the building during our day um, for a sweet treat. The second marking period though um, was Team Air, and as you could tell, Miss Bowman is on that team. <laughs> so that competitive nature came. I'm I'm neutral. I'm the one that has to tally the points. So I don't want no bias there. Uh, so I'm I'm like the, what we say the avatar that has, takes care of all the elements. Any. And, I'm the, and anime, I know anime, thank you. For those that watch anime cartoons would know what I'm talking about. Um, but for, so, um, so Team Air won the second market period challenge. Once again, they all received popcorn and received some treats for their behavior. Um, and one thing we wanted to bring out, Ms. Bowman alluded to it earlier. We, we, we did a, a penny war in response to one of our families that hit crisis. There was a fire that happened during the school day. All of a sudden we saw smoke come out of the house and we was like, we, we instantly responded, went into crisis mode. Turns come to find out it was one of our students who was sitting in class uh, unbeknownst to anything that was going on. So first thing Jackson did being the family that we are, we responded with a challenge for our house as a penny war. So this is a week long challenge. We literally got the, um, I don't see it, the water refill buckets, the three gallon water refill buckets and says students, staff, community members, whatever house you're part of, come into your pocket change on a daily basis. Once again, this is only for the five days that we, after, after the trauma happened, because I think it happened on a Thursday or Friday. So we, we started the penny wars that, that Monday. So those five days we said, empty your pockets, you know what I mean, for your house and the, the house that gets the most, um, the most pennies or the most change or the most money will tally that up and those points will go to your house for the second market period. So um, to congratulate, once again, House Air had the most money received, but to congratulate everybody in that one week's time and that rapid response, we were able to raise $932,037 for that family in response. And that was, once again, that was just in a week's worth of time. And that was just the Jackson family. We didn't send it out to the district. We didn't send it out to anybody. We just wanted to, to, to show our love to our family um, in that particular standpoint. So um, the, the um, two, two, uh, two wise individuals told me these words here. Um, one said, make sure we memorialize our work. And that means that everything that we're doing that is great for our community, great for our students, make sure we put it on blast so that everybody can see it. Another wise, another wise person told me that we need to control our narrative. Um, so a lot of things, and they're both in this room. Um, so a lot of a lot of things that we see on the news and on the media um, aren't aren't really our narrative. That's not what's really happening in Jackson. That's not what was really happening in the school district of York. I'm preaching to the choir. You all know that. So how how are we doing that? And our biggest rock. How are we communicating with our families? We have three social media platforms. Um, and once, uh, can we give a round of applause to the tech team for helping us set those up? Um, this is not this is not possible without the security of our tech team. Of course, we we followed up with them, and they were able to make sure all of our um, T's were our eyes were dotted, our T's were crossed. So we have our Instagram page, um, which is run by our support staff, Miss Collar. Our community schools runs our Instagram page. Um, you can follow us at um, Jackson K eight underscore PBIS. We also have our Facebook page. Um, Ms. Nelson, our, our school social worker, runs our Facebook page. You can follow us at Jackson K8 School um, at York PA. 
Um, and then we also have our new newly released YouTube channel. Um, so on our YouTube channel, you'll find a lot of things. And yeah, this is this is um, like FUBU. It was for the students, by the students. OK, so this was an idea that came up from our students. This is what they wanted to do. So it's an opportunity for them to showcase their skills. We have a lot of we have a lot of students that want to get into video editing and want to do those types of things. So what better way to do it than with YouTube? So you can follow us at um, Jackson um, dash K8. So we thank you once again for the opportunity to share it um, to share why why Jackson is a great place to work and learn. And that's been kind of our model this this second semester is because we've been focusing really on the wants and needs of our students and of our staff. Um, so with a lot of the opportunities to give information, we've been trying our best to respond to those in, in many different ways. But more importantly, what ways can we do to build up and to, and to um, improve our school climate and culture? So I know you guys have a bunch of questions. I saw y'all circling some things. <laughs> so we'll, we'll we'll take your questions. And it's hot. Y'all turn the heat on in here. Oh, and excuse the um, excuse the attire. We we've, we've been for Black History Month. We've been doing um, themed days. So today was Black Panther dressed in black, and this was the blackest thing I could find in our our wardrobe. But you see our staff there; they're dressed accordingly. Well, thank I, just, you. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I just have a comment, uh, sure. Ms. Bowman and Dr. Jones. Uh, I'm glad to see you. You have your Paul Paul School. Paul Paul. Yeah, I was wondering too if you still had your school store. Years ago, I volunteered down at Jackson PTA, all of it, and then we had a trailer set up out on the grounds, and all the supplies were donated where the kids come in and buy so they wouldn't spend a whole lot of money out in the stores. And it worked out very well for the children. And I myself, I worked down there in the school store for the children. So it was very rewarding. I'm glad I'm seeing this. Yeah, and we found that. from the students the best way. So originally we had, um, and it's direct words of, the, of our older students, we had too much kitty stuff. <laughs> in our school store. So that really did, wasn't what motivated them. Mm -hmm. So we asked them, we sent out a survey. We said, what kind of things do you want in your school store? Trust me, when I, they gave us a whole list of things to, to, yeah. to get. So Ms. Bowman ran out the next day, if not the, the, the week after multiple trips mm -hmm. and got exactly what they wanted. And yeah. that that coupled with the opportunity to let the teachers take charge of it, which I said is is we giving them to, total autonomy with our, with our school store. It has definitely improved um, okay. because the students are able to see it tangibly what they want and they're able to see see the carrot in front of them yeah. so to speak good glad to see that mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> well thank you very much for your presentation i just want to comment and crack up at that second row because five of the nine people are back there chewing gum and every time i look up everybody's mouth is <laughs> has been has been going but thank you all first of all for um the passion that you've demonstrated tonight and the support that you all um, by the room that's here um, tonight and the family that that you talked about, we can see and demonstrate it through some of the things that you shared with us. So really, really want to say kudos for that. Um, I have several questions, but I'm just going to focus on, on one or two. Um, and one, the first one is going back to... Um, uh, specifically because you put an emphasis on it um, with those three students in the 73 referrals. Um, I'm, I have a bunch of questions and I just really sort of want to know, um, I'm just taking a stab in the dark that, that there are outside problems um, in, in those circumstances and what are we doing as a school and a district to support you and to support that those um, families and are there any additional supports again um, putting on my work hat um, there are opportunities that that um, I can provide in um, areas of family and you support so I'm happy to hear anything um, that we could do to be able to help and support that because that's that's a little frightening um, to think about that. So all three of the students received mental health services through either Pennsylvania Counseling Service or an outside okay. agency. Um, in addition to that, one of the students is currently currently in the process of being tested for a special ed service, perhaps, um, that might be needed. And one of the students um, is currently, we've been 
And actually for all three of them, we've been in contact with Dr. Fitch's office and um, Laura Edwards quite a bit. Um, we have the um, school, our social workers involved with them. We have our communities and schools. We don't currently have a check and connect or we would have that person involved with those students also. Um, we also contracted with Dr. Lavelsberger to come in through his consulting company and do an evaluation of the students so that we could get a third party evaluation, um, looking at it objectively. He provided us with reports, which I forwarded to um, Ms. Blo Ms. Edwards and Dr. Fitch, and they are looking at where we need to go from here. We have made numerous parent contacts. We've done home visits. Most of the parents are willing to work with us, but they are also at a loss for some of the behaviors. Ms. Bowman, I'm going to put on my therapist hat now. Thank you. I'm trying to understand how is the mental health service going to be rectified by creating an IEP or looking for special ed services? Well, it's not that the mental health, that particular individual is already being seen by Pennsylvania Counseling Services family-based, and they are thinking and, and have discussed the possibility of sending the young man to Bridges. Okay, um, the, my follow-up question to that is, to me, there seems to be some unrecognized or undiagnosed trauma, and I'd, I would like to know what this child ACES scores are. Based on my relationship with the three students, I'm going to tell you a story about a student who heard on Facebook from his uncle that his mother had passed away the last day of school last year. And the young man got up and came to school to Jackson. And we knew when he walked in the building, there was something wrong. And we asked him. He didn't tell us. It took another staff member who had found out through Facebook to let us know what happened. That young man decided hours after he found out his mother had passed away that he was going to come and spend his day with us instead mm -hmm. of staying home. I'm going to say their ACEs scores are really high. I can't say for sure. I've never sat down with the, with the assessment. But based on their conversations with me, very high. And at some point, the other student, the, the young man who came to us after his mother's passing, we have been working very hard to get him into Bridges also, but we are running into an insurance diagnosis type of thing. But we are on it. We are not, we are not dropping those three. I just I put those in there so that you would see that not all of our students. We have a small group of students who need intensive supports, and we are currently doing the best that we can to provide them with the supports and knock on doors and bang down whatever is getting in our way to get them what they need. And we may need to have further conversations in terms of what you're recommending, because after 36 years of working in the field, mm -hmm. I don't see much <clears throat> coming from a said program that you mentioned in terms of dealing with ch children who have informed trauma, intense trauma. So I would be more remiss than looking at other programs. What I'm going to say about that is we do offer other programs, but if not, if I'm not mistaken and someone from central administration could correct me if I'm wrong, the only one that we currently transport to is that particular one. And so when parents don't have transportation to get the students to the other facilities, that's why we're, why they're looking at that one. Then we need to have more conversations about what else we could do as a district besides just go to one referral source. And in my dealings with that, and I'm not impressed mm -hmm. with the level of staff that they Care. have there. Mm -hmm. I'm not impressed. So we need to check out something else. I appreciate that. And also to that point too, sorry. One thing we forgot to mention, which um, goes to our one of our major rocks of increasing communication. Every Monday, the support team meets 
on, on, a, on a weekly basis. And, um, and all of these students are uplifted, as well as with um, all of our outside support. So with, with Tyler and his, and his crew from SPEC, um, as well as all of our interventionists that come in from the district. So um, Dr. Dr. Fitch's office always has representation there. Our tennis officer has representation there. So all of these students are uplifted as, as they meet the criteria for either behavior attendance or for academics. So those three, as we said, have been mentioned from the very beginning as, as, as being flagged, so to speak. Speak, but all of the students that are are in the uh, that are in the red are in need of support are always mentioned in during those meetings. And what can share? What can you share with me about the therapeutic services that your social worker performs? So what 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 she does is um, she she does actually a lot, um, and, and most of the time out out of the scope of her particular thing because she she um she. She does run in scripts. So it's her group that she runs. She calls it Angry Birds. And it's basically an intervention type thing to, for de-escalation skills. So she runs groups as well. She does individual things with students. Um, she does, uh, of course, the risk screeners and all those different things as well. I just want to, <laughs> when you mentioned the name of the group Angry Birds, that just shook my core. So we also have to be particular about language and how we're using language and what that may represent. Sure. Angry sure. birds represent something entirely different to me. No, so originally I understand, I understand what you're saying. I'm just but but so originally it, um, it no, came out when it. No, no, it came out when the the app the game Angry Birds came out. I so it was a way to attract the the younger students to it. Like, oh, it's Angry Birds, let's go play Angry Birds. But it was it was basically a hook and a and a way to get students to come because what she had said is before it was a lot of students were turned off by other names, but when they heard that, they knew, okay, this is this is going to be a time for me to be able to be free and talk to somebody who I trust. So she's been able to build rapport with all the all the different age groups. So she runs it for different age groups, she does it strategically for students that are having problems so it comes from the recommendations of our teachers as well as from administration so that particular title was just based off of that and dr jones not no need to defend that i'm just telling you how it made me feel sure, when sure. i heard angry birds sure, sure so i don't need i don't need a defense or an explanation for why she came up with the name as an adult and as a therapist who heard that i'm just telling you how it hit me so i also want to interject too in addition to doing the the social groups that she does, we also have a girls on the run group that we do um, run. Our teachers are the coaches. We also have um, communities and schools that works very closely. We also have our school psychologist who does check in and check outs. That's something that we're really trying to get. We realize that there are some students who just need that one connection with an adult and we are doing our very best to provide that to them um, and as dr jones mentioned we do meet for mtss every week and those students are always talked about um, and how can we do that and who's able to take something off of their plate in order to be able to check in with this child because this child needs a check-in they need to be connected to somebody and sometimes it's me, sometimes it's Dr. Jones, sometimes it's every single person back here um, because they provide that for their individual classroom students. And thank you all, because we know that you can't be all things to all students, but if you can make those vital connections, mm -hmm. that's what's important. Thank you. Um, and, and the last thing I'll inquire about is um, the seventh and eighth grade. That was my next circle. Um, is it the CDT? I think it's the CDT. Yeah, the second. And and just being concerned about what's there, and so it makes me ask the question: What are we doing immediately to prepare these students for for high school? Um, I'm so, um, the the one through CDT. The CDT. CDT. Okay. And um, yeah, the common interim. So when you think of small groups, you generally think of a K to four classroom doing that. We do small groups in our seventh and eighth grade also, because we do believe that that's the only way that we're going to be able to meet the students at the area, at the level in which they need that assistance. So we do that in, in all subjects in seventh and eighth grade. We also provide those students with an after-school tutoring program, all of our students 
through our school improvement grant. We have an after school tutoring program for students. And those are based on the students that the teachers identify as a need reaching out to them. Um, we are also very diligent about using our IXL, which is a computer adaptive program. So what that means is based on the diagnostic, it will provide them a specific level. It will provide them a prescription of things to work on, but it will also allow the teacher to provide them on grade level opportunities too. So we try to incorporate that as much as we can. Um, I will tell you again, I mentioned earlier that the seventh and eighth grade math teacher in particular, this is his second year with us straight out of college. And so we are working with him also to provide him the supports. We have um, Megan Busby and Jenna Philo, uh, two of the E3 plus instructional coaches, they come in and meet with him on a regular basis. They are in constant communication with me as to how those things are going. In addition, he's he went to uh, McKinley to see Dina Conzone teach one day last week. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, tomorrow he's going to see somebody at STEAM. I'm sorry, I, I don't remember who had the seventh and eighth grade teachers at STEAM, the math teacher, but I believe he's going to observe them also so that we can provide him with what a classroom looks like. He also meets with Dr. Jones and I on a regular basis to talk about what's going on, and how we can provide him the assistance. He also has a very good mo uh, mentor, so he's part of the mentor program. That's what I was going to ask and, and, and making sure, because when you shared about the, the three new and the seven less than five years, I think it was, you said the three, less, less than three, than three. years, mm -hmm. <clears throat> um, making sure, you know, we had some sort of um, program or process in place to support them, as well as are we putting them in the classroom with the, with the, the neediest kids? Um, so my philosophy is, and, and if the staff will be honest with you, they'll tell you they're not always happy with the decisions that I make as far as moving of teachers. But I believe that our best performing teachers belong with our students who have the most need. And so we make those adjustments as necessary. Um, it's a little more difficult in seventh and eighth grade because you have one core content teacher. So I don't have movement mm -hmm. that I can I can necessarily make. And so that's why we're opting to provide him as many of the supports. And I, I want to say this, and he's behind me, so I hope he's listening. I have 100% faith in this young man and his ability. He is with us because he chooses to be with us. Right. He enjoys, thoroughly enjoys our students, and he will be the teacher that I know he can be. Absolutely. Well, thank you for saying yes. that. Saying... <laughs> And the last, the last question I'll ask is how do you engage, um, because I hear the wonderful things about your parent liaisons, how do you engage your families to support you in, the, in all of the things that you're doing, and particularly as it relates to this academic pro progress? I, I would just say we, we just extend an open invitation. You know, I mean, we, we we have an open door policy and that's often is extended to you all as well. Anytime we have an event, anytime we have a celebration of sorts or we, we, we allow the parents to come in. And, and even on the flip side, we have parents that we have students that are struggling and they need that one on one attention. We invite our parents to come and sit in the classroom with them at the at the course, at the request of our of our teachers. Um, but we have many parents that have come in and have had sit down and had one on ones with their students and instantly they straighten up. So <laughs> so we just have an open invitation with our with our parents and and we just like i said we're a family so we're just to the point where we we just we just keep it keep it real it is what it is and like i said we are blessed to have three parent liaisons that are able to tell us beforehand and 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 are able to tell us before it happens what the what the needs are and we just try to to, to fit those needs before they become bigger issues I want to add to that too. I also think that one of the things that we do well is when a parent is banging on our door and they want to speak to somebody we're there we're not going behind another door we're not hiding behind something anywhere. They're there. Whatever I'm doing, I'm stopping. Whatever Dr. Jones is doing, he's stopping. Because at that point in time, they need to let that we need to let them vent to us as to whatever the problem is. Mm -hmm. um, and then once we do that and we acknowledge the fact that they have these feelings and these concerns, and maybe we don't have the answers right now, but I'm gonna work on it. I'm gonna give you a call back. I'm gonna do this and this. When they leave. The, the person who was cursing me out when they walked in the door is hugging me on the way out the door. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And that's okay, because that's what it takes sometimes. Is it always a nice thing to have happen to you? 
no right but but it is it is the reality and and we we bear in mind and we treat them with respect they are there showing us that they care about their students and that's the only way they know how to share show us and so we answer them well we appreciate you being that, right. that wall um and being available to them and having an open door policy because at times you know you're going to have those those difficult parents i mean that's just you know, that's just the reality and um, building that relationship. And as you say, they may come in um, as bears, but they 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 will leave or come in as a tiger and leave, leave as a bear, whatever saying is, you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> but it, it's really, really nice to be able to hear that, um, you know, our families are feeling comfortable enough to come in and show you who they are mm -hmm. and, and that's the difference too they don't have to put on a put on a front when they you know they don't have it all together or they have a need or okay. um you know they will still come so that speaks to testament to the work that you're all doing so thank you all for everything that you're doing and thank all your um your staff and miss bowman you you did answer my last question oh. and didn't even know you answered it but i was going to ask about how are you talking with other buildings about best practices that they're utilizing you talked about how you're sending your teacher mm -hmm. over to get some information so we also have um shoot now correct me learning fridays leaders learning for leadership leadership for learning um and so we have an opportunity the district affords us the opportunity to meet as principals together to um share we circle up we share things we we talk about things that are going well also um as administrators we know what it's like to be in this position not everybody realizes what it's like and so we lean on each other when we need to you would maybe and maybe you wouldn't be but there were quite a few text messages and emails sent to me today because i'm not a public speaker this stressed me out for the last five days um and they knew it and they were sending me text messages you got this you got this and i didn't pass out so we're good <laughs> miss bowman what you and your sisters i'm, I'm you know, and your families as you can just stop with you you Don't got even this <laughs> but I'm, I'm glad to see that your, your staff is dedicated and devoted and i know that you're dealing with a, a tough population at times but I believe that every family wants the best for their children. Mm -hmm. And I just commend you and your staff for being there to give them that best. Thank you. And I'm just hoping that we could do something to work on that um, fourth grade math. Mr. Jones. So, so I'm well, looking at on the PVAS, we're, we're looking at, yeah, we're looking at grade four. Okay. Yeah. We are working on all of it. Holistically, oh, holistically, okay. <laughs> Well, I know that you do, but I was just looking at okay, on the PVAS scores, the fourth graders mm -hmm. were well below. Okay. That In is an science. opportunity for Jackson to shine next year. So when we have this conversation, you will be like, wow. And we'll be like, yep, we did it. Okay. Well, thank you. You're welcome. I had a Dying couple, global. yes. So um, actually, uh, Director Kennedy uh, asked most of my questions I had down, um, but um, with the three parent liaisons, I want to make sure, are they involved in, with any of the uh, Title I uh, parent involvement conferences? And the reason why I'm asking, uh, I guess I was a parent liaison for five or six years and went to all the conferences and it was pounded into me. Mm -hmm. As a model, um, as a parent liaison, I always opened up my meetings with uh, more or less, what can I do to help you, to help your child? And it was more based on academics. So are these parent liaisons going or do they have the opportunity to go to these Title I parent involvement conferences that's where i first met yeah yes yeah, the, opportunity, the opportunity is there um i know just recently it was started that all the parent liaisons across the district are meeting collectively um so they've been to all of those meetings as well as miss walker um she does on no, a monthly the basis conferences yeah the conferences. conferences so the conferences if, if you have conferences for to suggest for us we will gladly send the our uh okay. our representation for that well, yeah, we'll make we'll sure, make sure Sandy Walker and Miss Torres. Uh, please, please do. Because we would love to, to show off yeah, I mean, our Jackson great. 
most of what I'm looking at on here is um, it's not really something the Title I parent liaisons would do. It's something the school does anyway. I just want to make sure our parent liaisons are empowered to know what they can do to help their parents, to help their child academically. Sure, sure, sure. Well, I mean, okay. to, on, on that note, a good segue for an idea that they come came up with was our, our move up day at the end of the year. So they're actually spearheading the the collaboration of forming that move up day. I know it was done years past, but for, for what, COVID, what are you calling it? move up day. Move up. It's not a graduation, but it's a move up day. So our eighth graders move up to ninth grade, our kindergartners move up to, to first grade. So they're they're actually that was their idea. So they're actually um doing that and we're supporting them to run that from the president from the parent liaison perspective. Okay. Well, more more to come with that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I look forward, if I'm still on this board next year, to seeing how the increase in the academic scores for um, Jackson are. Sure. Thank you. I Hi. just have a statement. Oh. I'm sorry, Micah. Um, I just wanted to say thank you, Jackson, for a job well done, and thank you for showing up. Yeah. Please use me as a resource because I had just been assigned to your side of town. So I will give you my business card because I also work for the city of York as well. But again, just thank you. And you got some of my favorite people that I see in the audience. So thank you. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Um, I'd like to first start off by saying Jackson is near and dear to my heart because I went there along. Hey, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> Let me calm down, but we got to talk after this. Okay. Uh, still live around the corner. My whole family came up through there. So woohoo. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, with my dog. Yeah. Yeah. Second thing, Team Earth, because I love the Avatar. <laughs> Earth is my favorite one. So, hey, guys. All right. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Team Respect Air. and love to everybody, but Earth. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, uh, and then third, uh, kind of like a statement and the question. Um, first of all, I love seeing um, everything that you guys are doing in your community partnership. I mean, hey, it's right there in your goals and your purpose statement. And then boom, you hit us with a slide of everything that you're doing with the community members and such. Um, so uh, yeah, that was very impressive and um, really uh, encouraging to hear. Um, uh, back on your purpose statement, the, the, the goal of meeting the needs of our students through a growth mindset and empowering students to achieve um, their personal best can you speak to that a little bit, like specifically, you know, things that you may have in the fire and what you're doing um, uh, to address the the needs of our students, you know, particularly, you know, addressing the chronic absenteeism and diff other different issues that they may be coming into contact with. So, you know, what are we doing to help meet children and family needs? And, and so, that? so I'll start off and then I'll pass the mic to Ms. Bowman. Um, <clears throat> My philosophy, and I guess a lot of other educators' philosophy, is we have to we have to build a supportive environment first before in order to attack our chronic absenteeism. So that's been our goal of making sure we create a safe space for our students to to learn, and more importantly, a safe space for our, for our staff to learn. So that's why Jackson is a great place to work and learn. So we've we've been um, that's why all of our rocks for 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 culture and climate came directly from from the students and from the staff. So. Our goal to attack our chronic absenteeism is, is to reach out to those students who are absent and find out why why they're absent, for for lack of better words. And most of the time, we get it on the back end as a as a as a um as a report on the back end. But we're trying to be more proactive as we can. So having more conversations with our parents, having more conversations with our support systems, our attendance officers, to find out why are these students missing uh, missing school, and then attack that problem head on. And before you go to Ms. Bowman, thank you, because you mentioned something that just brought up the last question when you started talking about your anonymous surveys. Yes. And you talked about, you were mentioned the word retribution. And hopefully in our culture and climate, everybody should feel open and free to talk about what's going on. And there should be no fear of retribution. Sure, sure. Because you don't know what you don't know. Sure. And you can't ask or post questions sure. if you feel as though there's going to be retribution. Sure. So. And, and that we, was a word that stuck out. And, not, and hopefully in our culture and climate, we don't have to worry about retribution because we value the information that staff have to bring. Right. And hopefully that you are valuing that information right. as well. Um, and I'll, I'll be right back to your question in a second. I, I do think that there is some value to an anonymous survey, though, because people do feel like they can say things. Um, 
that they might not feel comfortable saying, not maybe not even for retribution, but for fear of hurting somebody's feelings. Like I tell them all the time. I tell the instructional leadership time, team all the time. They can tell you. I said, it, if I stink, I stink. So you're going to have to tell me I stink. You're going to have to call me out. You're going to have to say, because I'm not going to get any better. And I can't be the best I am if you're not behind me. And, and to be honest with you, that's, that's why they're here. They knew I was stressing about it. They wanted to be behind me. I appreciate it. I asked them one time, and this is the turnout that we got. So I don't think they're afraid. I think sometimes it's more of a concern how they're, how they're going to make us feel. We just did an anonymous survey and they laid it out. 31 people told us exactly what they thought. And that was good because we have some place to start now. Um, and that, and we do that through being honest. You, you might not like me. Like I said earlier, they may not like, I actually just had a conversation with one of the teachers today before she left. She said, I'm just going to tell you, I don't always like what you do. And of course, in my head, I'm thinking, well, that's okay, because I don't always like everything everybody else does. But what she said after that was, but I always know you're fair and you have the best interest of students. Mm -hmm. And that's what, where we need to be. That is that's what right. we promote at Jackson all day, every day for all of our teachers, all of our students, all of our staff, including, because when we say staff, I don't mean just YCEA. We understand. I mean, yeah. all of our staff it's is included in everything. It is our whole building. Mm -hmm. Um, so I think that that's how we're developing that comfort um, where we can call each other out without, you know, worrying about it. I'll still love you tomorrow kind of thing. Mm -hmm. um, personal best. Meeting the needs of our students through a growth mindset and empowering students to achieve their personal best. What we were trying to do there is to make sure that we were focusing on growth and not a, a statement or a thought that our students can't because of, because there is no because of. There may be a little bump that we have to cross over, or there may be a hoop that we have to jump through, but there is no because of. I am a because of. I'm a 19 something something graduate of. <laughs> Who said 72? <laughs> I know who it was. He's going to get hurt tomorrow, just so you know. A 1988 graduate of York City. And, and I am very proud of that. That is, that is not something that I, I carry that like a badge. Um, and I want our students to carry it like a badge too. It is something to be proud of. And, and the way that you do that is you don't, we, we talk about scaffolds, but sometimes scaffolds become crutches. And we have to make sure that that doesn't happen. We are not, our students are not going to not achieve. It's, it's just not gonna happen. We are moving them. We put in our pers their personal best though, because we also didn't wanna have them all thinking that they needed to fit into a certain box. Like, I'm not going to say you all have to go to college because you don't have to go to college. There are very successful people who do not go to college. Very successful people who do not graduate high school. It, it just depends on what your passion and what your ability is to do that. So we want them to find their personal best. Um, and we do that as far as meeting their needs. That's what we're talking about, meeting one-on-one -on -one with the students, trying to get to know them, also meeting them at their academic need. We need to meet them at their social and emotional need, and we also need to meet them at their academic need. Because, and the, the reality is, if they like you, they will bend over backwards and do whatever they need to do to make you proud of them. And they need to know that we're proud of them just from coming in the, in the door. I mean, that's the, that's really, that's really how we operate. Thank you for that. You're welcome. You're very welcome. Thank you, guys. And Mr. Thank Jones, you. Dr. Jones, <laughs> we didn't beat you up. <laughs> Are we so talking I, about the Eagles again? No, 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 no. Oh. <laughs> no. A staff, a staff member, not from your building, called me and said, Dr. Jones said, don't you beat them up tomorrow night. <laughs> take, take it easy on us. Take it easy on take us. It easy on we took it easy on us. All right, thank you. No, any other, any other questions? We'll definitely, <laughs> we'll definitely entertain just, any Just questions. a closing statement from me. Jackson is 
you all are doing great. I had a, my one granddaughter that I raised, and I know some of your older teachers are here, and some of you may have had my granddaughter, Kiana See. Johnson. <laughs> she received the President's Award for Excellence. So that goes to show you what Jackson School is all about. Because all right. she couldn't have done it without her That's teachers. Exactly right. She couldn't have done it, couldn't couldn't have done it without her Jackson. teachers. The <laughs> President's <laughs> Award. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm going to put a plug in for Ferguson. Not Jackson's no, best. No, 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 no. No, no. Jackson's the best. Sorry, other principals who are watching. <laughs> <laughs> the superintendent's report dr barry good evening thank you all thank you. have a good night And that, Mrs. Bowman, I met your mother, your mother and your sister. We're great friends. We're a great buddy. Okay, good evening, everybody. Good evening. Our update for tonight is pretty short. Um, we do have our levels of transmission and I'm happy to report we have all shifted back to low for the time being, hopefully permanently, but for definitely for the time being. Our COVID cases for the month of February have stood strong at six since last week. So we haven't had any more, so that is good. Um, we are, we're, we're hopeful that we can remain at six and that we are on the downswing of the COVID upswing from the holidays. One of the next slide is on um, this month's section of sick day usage um, for YCEA. 20 days, which was the same as last month and um, 106, so a little bit less than um, the month before. On the next slide, you have the ESP sick day usage and 20 days last month and half that this month, 27. So definitely an improvement. Mm -hmm. Well, 27 is William Penn. That's that, you know, that's a that's a huge jump down. And then um you can see the rest of them are definitely trending in the right direction. couple of updates. Um, we're going to be surveying the staff in regards to a partner partnership with the Lincoln Health and Wellness Center that is over at um, the um, old Central High, School, Central High School building. The IU runs a wellness center out of that location. And um, we've been in the discussion with the folks from the IU, the IU has a location up at their um, New Oxford site, and it is very well received by the staff. It is a possible um, huge money saver for our staff, not just all staff, any staff that participates in our healthcare plan. Um, it's not designed to replace a medical doctor, but to be a supplement instead of going to urgent care and paying a copay, you can go to the health center and pay no copay. So we're gonna survey the staff to find out if there's interest. They did um, a feasibility study of our insurance usage to see if we would be a good candidate. Well, we knew we would be a great candidate because we use our insurance quite frequently in the school district of the city of York. And so um, we're excited to be able to send that survey out, get that information, and hopefully be a part of that network. 
And Dr. Barry, just just yeah. a question in reference to that. Mm -hmm. um, would a spouse is also yes, anyone who is on services. your health insurance would be able to participate. So dependents, staff, um, and um, spouses, if you're if they're on the insurance plan. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Um, the school district administration in conjunction with um, the board reserves the right. We want, we want to put a disclaimer in our health and safety plan. So we have to review our health and safety plan every six months. And the way the COVID cases crept up, up after Christmas was pretty scary. And we don't know when they're going to creep up like that, whether it's going to be over a break, whether it's going to be between a month. I'd like to be able to um, have the board support in putting a disclaimer in the health and safety plan as an addendum to the original plan for the March agenda that says if we need to go back to mask, we can make the decision to go back to mask. Because I think that's something that can happen very rapidly. And I don't want us to have to wait for another board member to mem meeting to be able to make that decision. So. Um, two recommendations, one in involving the charter school application um, that we will hopefully be voting on tonight um, based on the comprehensive reports from both the um, MACSY charter team as well as our district um, cabinet team. Um, the district's position based on this report is that the recommendation is to deny that application. So. And last but not least, um, the board asked for some additional information for Dr. McNeilis's contract. We'd like to enter into a contract with basically about eight days a month for the amount not to exceed $35,000 for the remainder of the school year. So it's an average of eight days a month. Two more listen and learns left, one on the 27th of February and one on the 27th of March. One is via Zoom and the other one is at the STEAM Academy. And our February um, holiday on Monday, as well as the early dismissal on the 22nd. There are our March half days. for early dismissal and a um, vacation day for students for the 17th for Easter. Couple of Bearcat shout outs. Our wonderful boys basketball team is going to the county championships tomorrow night at seven o'clock. If anybody would like to attend, let us know and we can get you tickets, but I will warn you and caution you, it is very, very crowded. So if the game starts at seven, you probably need to get there like 615 if you want a parking space and a seat. Specifically, specifically if you're driving and you you know you have any kind of how handicaps we can call and get you preferential parking up front. So um Principal Aylin Hansen of Devers Pre-K 8 had an awesome interview with. CBS that air detailing how additional funds could benefit the school um, and the entire district from the funds that would potentially come from the lawsuit that was won by, by the um, urban schools. Um, MTSS specialist up at the high school, Lisa Love, um, did a, a second ceremony with her girls group called the Bearcat Pearls. If you haven't had an opportunity to see them in action, they are um, quite the the, the um, poised young ladies and they did an excellent job with their program today. So I wanted to congratulate them as well. Dr. Barry, when, when do they meet? I mean, what? what, um, what I don't know time? exactly when they meet. We can find out, but they did. Today was a ceremony. So they, they, in, inducted some girls in the program in um December. I think it was a was it December it was about eight to ten of them, right? And yes. And so then they did it again today. So they have 
a total of about 12 to 14 girls. Mm -hmm. And um, like I said, they do they, they do a lot together outside of school. She takes them. She took them to the movies. She's taken them um, to she takes them to several service organizations. They volunteer at the food bank right over mm -hmm. here. Um, they did they did some volunteering at um, one of the nursing homes. So they're doing a lot of good things. We'll get their meeting dates for you, but a great group of young ladies, um, and it's a mixture. Two of them are seniors and um, have received the YCOS scholarship, so they're going to York College. Um, and then I think there was a three to 11th graders, and the, mo and the majority of them were freshmen and sophomores, but That's great. a great, great group. So. She yeah. calls them the Bearcat Pearls. I'd be interested okay. to hear about what the uh, requirements for induction are and hear about the different opportunities that they're getting out in the community. Yeah, that was actually one of the questions that mm -hmm. I'm, I've been forgetting to ask about, you know, how are we giving um, the children in the district, the district um, opportunities for, uh, you know, having multiple experiences, building mm -hmm. skills out in the community. Mm -hmm. um, as our principals with uh, Jackson said. So, um, yeah. One thing I did notice about these young ladies, most of them are not on sports teams. So these are young ladies that are, you know, more academic oriented and very, um, very shy. They're not your 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 loud, boisterous young ladies. They're the they're they're the ones that ease that could easily be um, missed. Um, they're, they're not necessarily your, um, your very popular young ladies, but they were very respectful. They, they were all dressed very, very nicely were, um, shaking hands, making eye contact. You can tell that they've been working really hard mm -hmm. and their parents got to come and put pearls on them as part of their induction ceremony. Wow. It was very, it was very moving. Dr. Gloucester, Dr. Foster, there were several um, folks there. So um, if they do another induction, I'll make sure the board gets an invitation. It definitely was worth seeing. It was it definitely filled my cup. Yes, it's once a semester. Oh, okay, so so there won't be another one until next year, but they may do some end of the year activities. And if they do, I'll make sure that you guys can be included. Very cool. Mm -hmm. Very, very very cup filling event today so and that is all that i have for today welcome thank you dr barry you're welcome so, any questions any questions moving on to our public comment are there any okay <laughs> Hello, good evening. Can everyone hear me? Yes. We can hear you. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you for allowing the time for me to address the board to present two concerns from the Teachers Association. The first is regarding professional development reporting. Every five years, teachers must complete a total of 180 hours of professional development. If these hours are not fulfilled and effectively reported, the teacher certificate will become inactive. This means they will not be able to be employed by any public or charter school in Pennsylvania. For the last two years, the school district of the city of York has failed to report its teacher's professional development hours promptly and accurately. The teacher's association has worked with the We are requesting that hours be reported expeditiously to ensure teachers get credit for the professional learning hours they have completed. Secondly, we are concerned about how the public conversation has been brought forth regarding teacher sick time usage. Per school code, teachers are granted 10 sick days every school year. We work in close personal contact with 20 to 35 plus students daily. This environment consistently exposes us to illnesses like flu, 
RSV, and stomach viruses, which have been reported nationally to add an increased rate this year. To prepare for these potential sick days, we provide lesson plans and instructions for substitutes, but often come to work masked when we're not feeling well to limit inter interruptions in our students' learning. We appreciate your support in keeping everyone, especially our students, safe and healthy. Your support has a direct link to staff retention and is needed so we may continue to perform the jobs we love to impact students' lives and serve our community. Thank you. Ms. Sam Martin, can you repeat the first mark, the first um, concern you shared because three quarters of it, we, we didn't hear anything. I'm sorry, it became muted. Um, the basic concern is that for the last two years, we've been having some issues with getting the reporting of our Act 48 credits. which are necessary for teachers to show the Pennsylvania Department of Education that we are fulfilling our duties. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, moving on with our item of initial concern, the Master's Academy Charter School. Motion to grant or deny the charter application for Master's Academy of York Charter School. I'd like uh, to make a motion to deny the charter school application for Master's Academy of York Charter School. Second. Second. We have a motion to accept to accept the motion of denying. Of denying. Okay. And Madam Secretary, I'd like a roll call vote. Director Alexander. Director Glover Brown. Yes. And yes is in denial. Okay, yes is in denial. Vice President Kennedy? Yes. Director Leonard? Yes. Director Liggins? Yes. Director Orr? Yes. Director Thompson? Yes. Director Wilkes? Yes. President Breland? Yes. And no. now we'll we need the second motion for the to adjudicate it, right? Yeah. Ms. Margie, do you want to make that motion? Or we'll motion to it? adjudicate. We need a motion to adjudicate this since we denied it. Oh, I move to adjudicate this uh, proposal. Second. Uh, hold on Please a second. Just for sir. yeah, just for clarity purposes, it'll be a motion to approve the adjudication in support of the board's denial. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, I, I make the motion to approve the adjudication that was presented to us to deny this uh, charter. I second. You want to roll call again, um, mm -hmm. Jeff? Yes. Sorry, Director Glover Brown. Yes. yes. Director Kennedy. I'm yes. sorry, Vice President Kennedy. It's fine. Yes. <laughs> Director Leonard. Yes. Director Liggins. Yes. Director Orr. Yes. Director Thompson. Yes. Director Wilkes. Yes. And Director Alexander is absent. President Breland. Yes. Now moving on to our committee reports on report items only, report of building and grounds committee. The evening board directors, administration, and those that are listening, um, we discussed these items last week. Um, we have 7A, report of buildings and grounds committee, um, contractors report, report, identify future projects, finish and active projects, and um, buildings and grounds reports for all distributed to all board directors. 7AA, our monthly reports were also distributed. 
moving down to 7AB, we have the facilities use schedule that we all have copies of and 7AC, our buildings and grounds project list. Mr. Haynes, do we have anything, any new reports from last week? And that concludes um, President Breland. Thank you, Madam Liggins. At this time, we'll and the board members, we will more remove to our report of our personnel committee. We have our resignations, followed by our retirements, education support professional voluntary transfer, education support professional involuntary transfers, declination of job offers. And we have some updated information. Any board members have any questions? Yes, Moving on to our consent agenda, board members, you could look at the action items that we need to vote on tonight. Board members, are we ready? Any board members have any that we need to take a look at or talk about? You need to abstain. I need to pull it then. Yeah, 8Q. Okay. Who wants to step beforehand or just after we do the vote? Okay. So, board members, we're going to pull item 8Q. Not pull it, but just hold it until. So, I have a separate vote for that. So, board members, in, in consent of moving forward with the other items. I'd like to have a motion that we- uh, uh, President uh, Brion, I have a motion that we accept all items uh, except for 8Q. It's been moved. Second. It's been moved and second, all in favor? Aye. 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 And now we're gonna have another board member introduce the following, the last one, 8Q. She can't do it, so my answer is a go. I make a motion to- uh, what is it? Eight. Eight Q. Eight Q to um be approved. To approve eight Q. Um, the second. Excuse me. I also will be abstaining from eight Q. So there's two. Two extensions. Okay. So it's been moved and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Madam Secretary, there's two abstentions. Okay, now we're down to our report of our chief recovery officer, Dr. Michael Thu. Uh, I have no report this evening, nothing new has occurred. Thank you, Dr. Thu. Now we'll move to our report of our, report of our board representatives, Community Progress Council. 
Fitch isn't here. Last week. Dr. Fitch is not here. No seat available. Yeah. Dr. Fitch said that he's been waiting to hear back from them. And they told him there is no seat available on the board for a York City School District employee at this time or a board member at this time. Yeah, that's what he was told for a, one of our board members, correct? Yeah, that I he has the email from him. So when he comes back Monday, I'll make sure he's got a copy of it. Okay. They did offer him to sit on some other Head Start program. We will, we will, we will move on at this point in time. <laughs> Lincoln Intermediate Unit, Ms. Liggins. Good evening again. Um, I have a very short report to give and all board members should have received a copy. Um, there was just one board, two board policies adopted, 317.2, employee use of electronic devices and 717 cellular telephones. Does any board members have questions? But that concludes my report, President Breland. Thank you, Madam Liggins. PSBA Legislative Advocacy Representative Report, Ms. Kennedy. Thank you, President Breland. Um, no report as the legislature just had a, um, what do you call it, a special election February 7th to fill three seats before they can actually do business. So those seats are now filled. So hopefully next month we'll have some action to actually discuss. That concludes my report. Thank you, Madam Kennedy. Your County Swift Technology, Ms. Diane Glover Brown. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I did have a, a slide that I wanted to be shown. Mm -hmm. Okay, this, what this slide is showing um, from the meeting, I guess, two weeks ago, every uh, January, they update the, the board with uh, the number of applications received per school district. And I just wanted to show, show uh, York City's uh, number of applications each year is the highest number of students applying to uh, Votex, well, your county school of tech. It always is, but um, you can see what the number is now. Right now, there are 490 um, open seats for students starting the next school year. And we have um, 1,122 students across the neighboring districts in our district uh, applying, with York City being the, um, the most. So I just wanted to show this and I hope somewhere down the line we can we're able to offer more encore classes. So while we have this up, um, I felt really honored a couple of weeks ago because normally um, York City students that attend York County School of Technology, I still call it Voted. Um, we don't see too much um, in the way of honor students and uh, um, just other accolades for, for New York City students. But there were three things that stood out um, two weeks ago when I had our meeting. One was uh, our vice president's granddaughter. <laughs> <laughs> So Naji was uh, part of the Skilled USA leadership team who attended um, the, uh, our meeting and did a great presentation. I kept looking around for uh, our vice president here. She didn't know that the family she, that, could come. I was sitting in the car. She, she was. was sitting didn't in the car. Yeah. The family could, and she did a uh, great job uh, with her presentation with her their field trip uh, to Washington. So I wanted to point that out. Also, we had a... Um, student from York City who became the first class 6A all-star fullback. He's, uh, his name was, uh, his name is a Anthony Torres. So that was the first for uh, York County School of Technology and he's from uh, York City School District. And the third thing was they do an alumni spotlight every month or every other month. And the spotlight this 
a couple of weeks ago was for our own uh, Quinn Johnson, our uh, chief mm -hmm. of police. So um, that was great. So there was a uh, video where Quinn talked and um, a lot of our other um, police officers were interviewed and some of the um, other staff. So I felt really proud a couple of weeks ago during that um, um, our board meeting for that. And that is the end of my report, other than what you were distributed. I got to add too, Madam Lover Brown. Yeah. There's four. There's a fourth. There was a fourth. There was a fourth. What did I miss? That you missed. Okay. And Miss Kennedy and myself attended. Well, we had the largest number of students at yeah, York City School of Technology that were inducted to the National Honor Society. Yeah. That's right. That's right. Well, you all attended yes. that. So we, yes, we yes. attended because my goddaughter was one of them and her granddaughter was another. Okay. Okay, that completes my report. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Madam Glover Brown. And now we will move we will move to our York Adams Tax Bureau, Mr. Hain. Uh yes, thank you. Good evening. Uh on January 30th uh of this past month, uh the York Adams director of the board of directors met uh for the purpose of reorganization, election of officers, committee appointments, and meeting schedule establishment. Uh and also to review some of their quarterly reports. And I do have the minutes if any of the board members would like to see those um, upon request. And that concludes my report. Thank you, Mr. Hain. And at this time, we'll have dollars for scholars. Madam Kennedy. Thank you, President Breland. Just a couple of things to share. Um, dollars for scholars, too. Also, just recently did um, elections for new officers uh, for 2023. They also um, had discussions about new uh, creating new financial decisions on how to utilize their investments to to gain greater um, outcomes on the investments of the funds being given to dollars or scholars. And then for the new um, 2023 student applications, um, there were 13 or 14 that have been received thus far for the 2020-23 school year. So um, that number should go up. So hopefully next meeting I'll be able to add that. But that concludes my report. Thank you, Madam Kennedy. We have any other business or other public comment? Hearing none, we have a list of items for distribution. And before I make a motion for adjournment, I just want to mention that the board will be going into executive session for some personnel negotiation issues. President Bill, before we adjourn. Uh, I received the notice that the YCAL dinner is coming up in April. Yes, we all did. We I, received I never the email. saw a location. I, I didn't either. I don't think it's been determined yet. Yeah, they just, so they sent a, they just sent yeah, they, a date, but no location. Yeah. Oh, wow. That seems. Yeah, they sent it. <laughs> exactly. So, that being said, I would like to. Have someone make a motion to adjourn? Move, second. It's been moved and seconded.